Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, Zoom Info's webcast with a wonderful partner we have here with us, G2. And the topic today is why integrated full funnel intent data uh, is critical for your go-to-market success. And then the last housekeeping item is Zoom Info is a publicly traded company. This presentation may contain forward-looking statements. Any buying decisions you make should be made based only upon currently available products and offerings. This is our complete safe harbor statement here for your review. If you'd like to read the fine print. Um, alrighty, so our wonderful guests we have today um, is Amanda Malko, she's the CMO of G2, as well as Brian Law, CMO here at Zoom Info. Thank you both for being here. Um, Amanda, I'd love to kick things off with you first. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Um, I'd love to hear about you and then feel free, Brian, to follow suit. Thanks for having me. So I'm Amanda Malko, CMO of G2, and uh, delighted to be here. I am joining in from Atlanta today. I've spent my entire career in B2B marketing, mostly marketing to marketers. So I love topics like these uh, and really looking forward to a great discussion. And I'm Brian Law, the CMO at Zoom Info. Really excited to be here with you, uh, Amanda. Uh, G2 is an amazing partner and uh, Becca with you as well. Uh, I have spent uh, a lot of my career in B2B marketing, uh, but also a lot of it in strategy uh, as well. Uh, and so re really excited to, to blend those two worlds together in our conversation today. Awesome. All right. Well, Amanda, I'll let you kick things off. Thanks. So uh, I, I just want to echo, we're super excited about the partnership with Zoom Info and um, talking about buyer intent data. And I, for those who don't know, G2 is the world's largest software marketplace. And so when we think about what is intent data, really it can be applied to any industry and it's really data that informs companies and people who are interested in buying something. So at its very basic level, it's what is my propensity to buy something right now? And at G2, we use the data in our marketplace across 80 million software buyers annually to help software companies understand who might be in market for their offerings or similar offerings in the space. We've got over 137,000 software products and services listed on G2 and a tremendous amount of data um, to power our buyer intent. And so with Zoom Info, we can do some really powerful things in the market and offer that for sales and marketing teams to be able to inform their go-to-market strategies. So excited to talk more about it, but at its core, that's what intent data is and who G2 is. Awesome, thank you, Amanda. Yeah, and uh, for Zoom Info again, we're, we are such uh, big fans of G2. Uh, it is an incredible marketplace and uh, review site. We rely on it heavily for our own intent activities, but also for getting feedback in terms of how we're performing as a company and our products. And so it's really exciting that we're actually ranked uh, number one in 28 of the G2 grids, uh, including uh, ones related to intent, where we are the leader. Uh, and so it's really exciting to have this conversation uh, today. In, in terms of uh, Zoom Info's intent data, uh, a, a few things that I wanted to, to, to call out is that uh, we enable real-time intent uh, insights into what your ideal companies and customers are doing. Uh, and that allows you to really be focused in your prospecting in your uh, upsells to your existing customers because you know what they're doing and what they care about. Uh, and, and we do that in a few different ways. Uh, so first of all, we're uh, industry leading when it comes to your own websites. Uh, if you're using our product, really understanding what companies and buyers are doing so that you can be as thoughtful and targeted as possible. Secondly, when you're thinking about those same groups in the broader web, we have incredibly rich and vast data on uh, sort of broader intent signals and then importantly, on top of that, something that's really exciting about Zoom Info and really a result of our scale is that we can give you company level information such as key leaders moving, uh, RFPs that are being opened. And, and things like that are a function of the fact that we have over 300 researchers that are just searching for those insights that are gonna allow you to be more effective in your sales and marketing efforts. And uh, when you sort of, think a little bit more about why that's relevant as, as, as we move to the next slide. Uh, it's- uh, Oh, can really I pause it really quickly there, Brian? Yeah, yeah, Sorry, sure, ahead, just wanted to let everybody know this is our first poll. We just want you to engage with it while Brian's talking through it. So just want to know how many external sources you, you do you rely on to gather intent data, zero, one, two, um, and you can engage with that poll. It's a pop-up right now, so you should be able to engage with it um, and select which one it is. And I apologize, Brian. 
no, no. Uh, really excited to see everyone's uh, everyone's responses. Uh, and so uh, the reason that that's important is is data in and of itself is is nice, uh, but it's only really useful if you can take actions on it. Uh, and I think many times, sort of traditionally, marketers were overly focused on sort of the inbound funnel, uh, trying to sort through that information and and, and help you. Uh, be able to prioritize what goes to sales. But increasingly, particularly given the economic downturn, we're really needing to do more with less, be as targeted as we can be, so that we are actionable, driving the results that the company expects, but also leveraging the resources that we have within our organizations. And something that's really exciting about ZoomInfo is we take that data and we allow you to do something with it. And uh, we think about it as plays or workflows, but it's the idea of taking that intent data and saying, ah, this company is interesting. These sets of individuals are the ones that we want to go after and integrate either with your own email platforms across sales or in marketing or leveraging ours. But also from a media perspective, you can then do individual level targeting uh, in display through our own DSP, as well as individual level targeting through LinkedIn and Facebook. And we have incredibly strong match rates that allow you to to get more reach than you would otherwise. And so that's just very, very powerful. And part of the, the what's great about our tight partnership between G2 and ZoomInfo. Definitely. All right, so let's see these results here. Uh, quite interesting. We've got um, a lot of people, the majority, 38% um, say three to seven uh, intense sources. And then it's almost an even split between one and two intense sources. And then there's a few folks on here that have zero intense sources. So definitely for those of you that have zero intense sources, we'll give you the, all the reasons and, and the, the benefits of utilizing intent, uh, both G2 and Zoom Info. Anything here to add speakers? I mean, it's really interesting. So we did some research on this at G2 and we found that uh, almost 75% of people use multiple sources. And so what that tells us is that once you understand the value of intent data and to Brian's point, how you're gonna utilize it across both sales and marketing and those key plays, it really is a great way to scale your go-to-market, especially in this environment in a way that's highly efficient. Um, so I love to see that over half the group uh, who's using intent data is really using multiple sources. Um, we often get asked, um, should I use one or the other? And the reality is if you can get really great at intent data, which you can, uh, it's great to use multiple sources, especially in a platform like Zoom Info where you can action on it. Yeah. Awesome. And the, the only thing I would add is 100% uh, yeah, agree on using as much uh, data as you can. It's making sure you pull it together in a way that is then actionable, that is is really where the key uh, to, to the magic comes from. Great. Well, thank you audiences for engaging in our poll. More to come. So why are we showing you these numbers? It's actually a great segue from Brian's last slide. So Brian talked about sort of the complexity of, of really going to market today, and um, it is more complex than ever. And so the way that marketers have historically thought about um, really marketing their, their companies is more of a funnel. Um, and that implies that there's a linear experience, and there's not. And so we actually, every year, G2, we have a, a excellent research team who looks at the data on g2.com and also surveys software buyers to understand how is software buying behavior changing. And we ask this question, during the process of selecting software for your company, how often does the following happen? Now I'm putting them all here in the slide because it's kind of comical when you think about it. And we've all bought software. I think most people now are buying software for whatever your profession is. The decision maker is changing 68% of the time. Stakeholders are added 71% of the time. Project scope changes often. So I thought I needed this piece of software, but as I learn, I really need this. Uh, and decisions are consensus based. So if you're struggling to figure out who should I be talking to, it's not just about um, the complexity of marketing and sales, it's a complexity of buying software. And so I think this speaks to the importance more than ever of making sure you're using relevant, ideally real-time data sources and getting to decision makers at the right moment because the decision maker a month ago might have be different than the decision maker today. So just stepping back and looking at the human experience of buying software, it's really hard to do. And that certainly makes jo our jobs as, as marketing and sales professionals harder too. And, and just something to, to add, uh, Google the last couple of years has done some research on, on this space, talking about the importance of, 
uh, intent, but also really, I think, the real-time nature of that, that data. So uh, they did a, a, a study last year with Comscore, and they found that two-thirds of buyers have a primary brand in mind when they start uh, the buying process, two-thirds of the time. And 90% of the time, they chose that uh, company. Uh, they did a follow-on this year with Bain, uh, a little bit of a different take on uh, companies having a day one list. So it could be one, it could be five. Um, but over 90% of the time, they have a day one list. And over 90% of the time, they choose from that day one list. So if you're not getting them with those intent signals, you're sort of missing out if you're trying to get them at the bottom of the funnel with demand gen activities. And that real-time nature of, uh, I'm seeing these activities, I'm seeing they're starting to show intent, and immediately being able to action on it is really critical. Uh, so I think just something we probably all assumed and have been thinking about, but really validates the importance of intent data and actionable and useful and credible intent data uh, as well. So I think that's a nice segue to how did G2 and Zoom Info work together? Um, so with our integration, you can actually use both in marketing OS and sales OS, G2 buyer intent data alongside Zoom Info intent data. You can really eliminate manual prospecting and think about who is actually in market right now and provide a much more relevant tailored experience in your marketing efforts. You can automate plays and actually tailor content to what you know about them based on what categories are they searching on G2. Are they comparing me to other companies? Uh, and where are they in their buying experience? And if you're in the sales org, you can actually have a much more relevant conversation with your prospects based on knowing that information. And you can actually run automated plays directly in Zoom Info and measure the success of those. So it is really a great and powerful combination for sales and marketing teams to be able to use G2 data directly with Zoom Info data in Zoom Info. I'm sure, Brian, you may want to add to this. This is our kind of one, two, three playbook on how you can do it. It's as easy as it looks, but certainly the strategy behind how you utilize it is critical. Yeah, and I mean, even a, sort of an, an example maybe, and, and if we switch to the next uh, slide, I, I, I can talk a little bit more about how you find the data and then what you can do with it. So you can see there in that bottom left-hand pane, uh, there's the, the opportunity to select the types of G2 data that you wanna be able to use. Uh, and so you can determine which, which of those different options is most relevant. You can uh, then det determine, you know, are you wanting to search on your company, potentially your competitors? And you can then see what's populating is a, a list of companies and actual people at those companies that you want to do something with. And so with that information, you can do a couple of different things. You can either take that and export it out. Uh, you could use it to create a campaign or you can actually set up automated workflows so that uh, should someone come to Zoom Info's page within G2, I want to make sure I immediately reach out to the buying committee for those folks so that you really are getting real-time activation on those insights. Uh, and so it's just incredibly powerful leveraging that rich data that's coming from G2 directly in the platform. Awesome. And I just wanted to add in our resources, we have um, Zoom Info CEO presented a video on our YouTube um, that goes a little bit more in depth and how to utilize it within the platforms, both marketing OS and sales OS. So feel free to, maybe not now, but in, after this, click on that and uh, check out that video. It's a really informative. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, and then I think we'll, we'll be collecting uh, your information now through a poll in terms of uh, what are some of the common challenges that you guys are facing. Uh, but wanted to talk a little bit about sort of what we frequently hear from our customers about issues that they're having with leveraging uh, intent data. And it tends to fall into sort of a few different buckets. So uh, the one that's probably most prevalent that comes up is, you know, how do I practically leverage this data? You know, theoretically nice, but you know, how do I get it set up? And then once I have it set up, how do I interpret it? There's so many different signals out there. We were just talking about this sort of, how do I rationalize all that information? And then potentially, the, the, you have the data, but it's actually not very good. Um, or how do I translate it into actions? And so I'll give a uh, sort of an example of my, my last company where I was at. We had almost half of all of our transactions came through self-service. And so uh, we were using one of our competitors. We were leveraging their intent data. And something that we found that was really interesting was of all those people who were purchasing online. So is real time uh, is, is could be in terms of are they having high intent to purchase or not? it had very little correlation with the intent data that we were getting from the company. 
And so it was wonderful that we had it, but it wasn't accurate. Um, and so that's something that we hear a lot from, from people. It's not just about having it, but it really needs to be useful and accurate. And so I really encourage you as you're leveraging intent data, test it out and see, are you getting the results you would expect? Uh, I think the second one is getting buy-in from different teams. You know, normally you're gonna have different teams across marketing and sales who potentially are gonna leverage that information. Uh, but you need to have everyone on the same page and getting that buy-in can be challenging. And so that's something that people frequently face is, uh, you know, how do you determine which ones you're gonna rely on in which situations and then what you're gonna do with it. Uh, the, the third piece of, that we hear is around sort of building a strategy of holistically, how are you approaching the market? How are you approaching companies and contacts? And really then being thoughtful about where intent plays a role. And then that last piece is, is around sort of measuring results and really being sure that you're understanding which pieces are getting the most uh, sort of activity, which ones are driving the results down funnel, uh, whether that's sort of uh, increasing deal sizes of the types of companies you want, speed to, to close and things of that nature. And so those are all common issues that, uh, that, that we're hearing that are coming up uh, more and more. Would you like to add anything there, Amanda, or uh, see our results from our poll? I am so interested to see the results. This is, these are the challenges absolutely that we hear. And I think the strat, yeah. And the practically leveraging, I mean, just really practically tell me how do I make sure that I'm utilizing it correctly, that I'm measuring it, that I'm setting it up. And a lot of times we hear, how do I make sure my sales team knows how to prioritize this, right? And utilize it effectively. Um, so I think there's a lot to unpack and I'm seeing that Nearly 78% say, how do I practically do this? Um, and so we put out a lot of resources uh, at G2 on sort of really how to, very tactical tips. And we're gonna talk about some of those here today as well. Awesome. Yeah, great results here. Um, I think that it's almost an even split between building a strategy and measuring results. Um, it seems like people don't have issues with getting multiple buy-in. So that's good to hear because I think that's always, that's always difficult, um, especially when practically leveraging it. Um, but awesome. All right, let's, let's keep moving. So I think we've touched on this briefly, but uh, essentially just at the highest levels, you can use G2 Intent Data in Sales OS or Zoom Info Marketing OS. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to doing this. I think if you skip to the next slide, I love this view because it does get to how can I practically utilize this? So one of the benefits is you can see the intent data that even if it's higher funnel intent data from Zoom Info, as Brian says, it's really important to be getting ahead of those decision makers before they're putting out their short list because 90% of the time they're choosing someone who's on that list. Um, and all the way through even some of these really lower funnel signals from G2, we see a lot of buyers who do when we do our research say, you know what, I was doing a comparison on G2 and within four to six weeks, I'd made my decision and signed the contract. So knowing that there are these key stages that your buyers are making decisions, these signals here on the right from G2 and Zoom Info are really valuable sources to say, who is the persona that I wanna reach right now? And within Zoom Info, you can see types of companies and contacts that you should be reaching out to based on that information. What I love is the left-hand side. So what are the plays that we should be running based on the specific signals and the recommended content and experience to provide at each stage? And so oftentimes, Brian alluded to this, we recommend really it's strategy, but also practical how to build a playbook. What am I going to send to each of these contacts who reach, if I get a signal for category, a category signal from G2, what's the content that I should be sending them? And what do I want my sales team to be doing in parallel when they're reaching out? And that can really be very transformative and tell you how you practically use this. And in a tool like Zoom Info, you can do it all in one place, which is really powerful. Um, I see we have a question that I'm just going to throw in here because I think it's really relevant to this topic, which is um, what plan should they be on within Zoom Info? It's available in Marketing OS and Sales OS, but I don't know if, Brian, you want to jump in here and share more about how can someone today use this within Zoom Info? Yeah, so in, in terms of the, the practical integration, if you're a member of uh, or, or a, uh, a purchaser of both G2 and uh, Zoom Info products, you should have access to both and you just need to take the necessary steps to do the integration. Uh, and, and we can make sure that there's the, the link there to follow through to, to the steps, but it is something that is out of the box. It's not sort of an additional purchase that you need to make. It's just truly doing the integration. 
I think the, the thing that I would add, I think we're going to get to questions pretty soon, but one of the things I would add is a lot of times we hear that um, people think they need the dream of perfect, perfect playbooks and plans to be able to leverage intent data. And so my advice would be just find a place to get started. And so as an example at G2, we use G2 and Zoom Info, and we're actually looking at category signals. So buyer intent being a great example of a category on G2 and actually having our sales team on a daily basis look at the companies who are showing up within that category and then finding relevant contacts within Zoom Info to see how we might be able to help them. And that's not something that takes a ton of time. You can stand up that play, if you will, very quickly. Of course, you can get much more sophisticated, especially with your marketing automation, but I would just say start somewhere if you're if you're and just continue to iterate and add to that those plays over time. Yeah, just as a, a, an example of how uh, we do it. So within uh, G2, we have our list of competitors. Uh, we've gone through and we've identified uh, who those are. And so if someone is searching for one of those, uh, we'll then get those company names that are identified. Uh, we have buying committees that are set up. So frequently for us, that's sales and marketing leaders. Uh, we'll then use that to pull in the specific individuals who fit that buying committee profile within those companies. And then we have it set up to trigger uh, different types of advertising. So again, through our DSP, through display, we are targeting those individuals. So it's not just broadly targeting the domain and wasting a ton of money uh, and being incredibly inefficient, but, it, but actually targeting those individuals and then also doing that through uh, social media as well. Uh, and again, we have really good uh, resolution across personal, personal and professional details, because as you know, on Facebook, people aren't as likely to put in their professional details. And so that match rate that's really high allows you to just more actively and effectively uh, target the people that you want to go after. Uh, and, and just doubling down on Amanda's comments relative to plays, uh, the nice thing is the platform actually enables those workflows. We also have a playbook that we've created that you can see if you visit our website, which is uh, sort of the top plays that we actually use internally that you can then leverage. Uh, and we're actually going to be integrating those into our platform so that they're right out of the box and you can say, oh, I want to do this type of play or I want to do that type of play. And so you, you can leverage those really day one when you get the platform going. And then obviously you can build and create new ones. But uh, many times it's just getting that motion going, starting from scratch and then um, uh, building from there. Awesome. Alrighty, so let's, uh, we've got one more poll for you audience members. Thank you for engaging with us today. So really just wanna understand how your company is, for those of you that are, have intent um, right today, how is your company using intent data? It's a multi-choice, multi-select. So feel free um, to engage with that poll right now. And we, uh, speakers, will get into some questions from the audience. All right, so our first question, Amanda, I wanna to toss this one to you. What are you seeing as it relates to intent data adoption in, in market? And it's a two part question. Would you say that more organizations are using multiple intent sources versus one versus none? And we've seen a little bit of that um, in our poll from earlier today, but love to hear just kind of market wide or industry wide. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I mentioned it uh, uh, briefly before, but in our research, we find that 70% of 75% of organizations, once they've actually adopted one intent data source, tend to use more than one. So it, it really is about figuring out how am I going to use it, standing up the right partners and integrations. But once we see once companies do, that they usually see value in, in layering in multiple intent sources. I think it's actually one of the most common myths around buyer intent is that you need you need to find the one central source, but it's actually quite antithetical to the way that, that buyer intent data can really be powerful. So um, I'd say the, the other thing that I could add here is the way that people measure the success, which is one of the challenges that Brian mentioned. And I did see that I think about a quarter of people said that that was a challenge for them. Um, might've been a little less than that, uh, Rebecca, I'd have to go back to the poll, but um, oftentimes it really is still about leads generated followed by pipeline and revenue influence, I think you're gonna see that increase in terms of less reliance on leads and more about the revenue value, because really that's what this is about is especially in this climate, how do we make sure we're being extremely efficient with our sales and marketing dollars and time? And it's increasingly more about the revenue we're driving, not the leads we're driving. And intent data is a wonderful way to make sure you're being really laser focused on prospects that are most likely to convert. And it can actually also be used for retention, 
which is a play we're seeing more and more these days. Of if you see you have a company or a customer that is researching on G2, for example, that's a great indication that your CSM should probably be reaching out and having a conversation. So in this climate more than ever, I think uh, the, the revenue protection and also uh, influence of, of intent data can't be overstated. So again, multiple sources uh, is a great thing when you're looking at it that way. Awesome. And there is a, an interesting question from the audience, and I want to toss this to you, Brian. Um, it is a question from our active audience. So um, intent data seems like a black box. Which signals Zoom Info and G2, and you can speak of the Zoom Info side, um, G2 use to come up with intent data? The more specific answer, the better to understand the value. And Amanda, feel free to follow up on the G2 side afterwards. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, a number of, of, of different things. So uh, importantly, we have our own DSP. Uh, and so that is just an incredible wealth of information that we own that gives us insight into so what people are doing across the broader web. And so that is a very, very powerful source of information for us. Uh, and we rely on that heavily. Uh, sort of a secondary piece is, uh, you know, as part of setting up uh, Zoom Info, uh, you'll identify what are the sort of the key intent topics uh, that you care about. And so you can see sort of broader search behavior across, uh, across the web. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, when people are coming into your actual website, uh, we are uh, leveraging sort of our, our very strong ability to, to match IP address uh, and, and sort of related uh, devices that you have so that you can understand sort of who is doing what uh, on your site. And then that last piece that I had talked about, what we will call sort of scoops, is information on companies and sort of the specific activities that are happening within them that leverage our uh, sort of over 300 uh, person research team that just gives you very, very specific and actionable information about those companies. I love this question because I do think it's the right, it's, it's such a powerful question to ask about intent data providers. Where is the data coming from? So for G2, it's it's pretty straightforward for G2. It's coming from G2.com and the signals on G2.com. A signal for us is with someone looking on a category page, were they doing research on CRM software? Uh, were they looking at comparison pages? Were they comparing one CRM company to another? Um, were they actually showing up somewhere on a G2 uh, page where we ha might have some advertising that's running that shows intent? And so we call that our sponsored content. And they're looking at that content and it's indicating that they're in market for a particular type of software or category. So for us, we have those different signals that you saw on that prior slide. Um, and they're really all about the audience that's coming to G2.com. So it's hyper relevant to anyone who is in market for B2B software. I see a question on is G2 just software? Um, we are software and related services is what I will say. So we are very focused on B2B software and services to help people with that software. And so uh, that is one of the things that makes our intent data so powerful for companies in this space is that it's hyper relevant uh, and no black box here. We're, we're very clear on where our data comes from. And then of course we've got, uh, we've got our own IP, you know, matching to make sure that we've got great match rates for the people who come there. And of course with Zoom Info, you can find the right relevant contacts that those companies to be reaching out to. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. It was just noticing a related question about being able to use uh, Zoom Info without uh, G2 to do intent information. You certainly could, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we've been ranked on G2's platform as sort of number one relative to intent data. And so we have an incredible amount of intent data within the Zoom Info platform. You can layer on top of that the really powerful G2 data that lets you see what's happening on G2 site and really get that detailed information about what other companies people are searching for. But yes, within the Zoom Info platform, you can leverage our, uh, our, our own proprietary uh, intent data. And before we get into any more questions, I wanna just toss up the results of our poll because I think there's a lot of questions in here that'll give us some good info. Just kind of see what the results are here. Mm -hmm. So you can see audience members, what everyone's using intent data for. So definitely heavy in both sales prospecting and even split between sales prospecting and marketing campaigns. Um, a little bit of you know sales engagement, deal acceleration and flagging customers. I'd be interested for any of you that said other, if you wouldn't mind just submitting in the Q&A what that other means. Um, we'd love to hear from you what, what, uh, what would not fit within those categories um, so that we can have a good understanding of it. There are some really good questions in here on how to use uh, intent data specifically. Um, can you use intent data for retention, cross-sell, upsell, 
Um, we also have questions in on just some use cases that are good fit for intent. So I don't know, uh, Amanda, if you wanted to talk maybe to either a use case or how you would use uh, intent data for retention, cross-sell, and upsell. Yeah, it's a, a great segue to a, one of my favorite customer use cases. So this was a company who's in the e-commerce space. Um, and what they were finding is the marketing team was really responsible for the lion's share of demand, but uh, working with very close partnership with SDRs. And they wanted to scale their SDR organization, but they realized that the efficiency of that, that was, not, was not high enough for them to justify really additional headcount. And so what they said was, I think we can actually provide higher intent, higher quality conversations. And as a result, we'd like to see our conversion rates increase and therefore uh, justify, uh, you know, scaling our SDR organization and also making sure we've got the right marketing plays to support that. So they did a test with G2 Intent data. Um, and their whole hypothesis was uh, fewer, better conversations. And what they found, of course, was that it was true. But here's what they did. They um, essentially had all of their SDRs trained up on how to respond to intent conversations, especially when someone is looking at a category or competitors on G2. They then prioritized those conversations on a daily and weekly basis so that they knew which leads were the highest propensity leads. And so they had their own scoring model for that using the intent data. They ran targeted marketing plays. Now, they primarily relied on email nurture alongside their SDR outreach, but they also had some paid social that primarily ran on LinkedIn, and we see that work really effectively in tandem with sales outreach. And they, if someone did not convert over a specific period of time, they knew they were still in market because they were on G2. They put them into an automated nurture so that they could hopefully get someone to be a hand raiser and a warmer lead for their SDRs. All of this is super relevant right now in this environment where people are trying to do more with less. And they found that their conversion rates increased nearly 3x within their SDR organization. So they were able to close, move more out business to opportunity stage, and then as a result, close more deals. Uh, and so I think it's a great example of sales and marketing alignment and also how you can, intent data is not either or, it's not marketing will handle it or sales will handle it. It's how do you make sure that you're actually leaning into the people who are in companies who are most likely to convert and running really targeted plays uh, against those. So that's one example, again, in the e-commerce company who is leveraging uh, their relevant category and competitive data on G2. Awesome. And you pretty much answered one of our audience questions, but I do want to ask Brian it as well, because I'd love to get your opinion on different marketing campaigns. So this uh, person is asking, does marketing campaigns from intent data include social and email campaigns targeted at your buyer persona within the company or what does the campaign look like? So if you'd like to answer that specifically or give an example or of a use case. Um, yeah. Right, Brian. Yeah, and, and maybe even a slightly broader answer and then I'll, I'll target in. I, sort of as a sort of a marketer, I, frequently where you know I've had pain points in the past is you're largely limited to your existing database, your first party data of who you're going to reach out to, and then you do sort of email campaigns against them. Or uh, you know, potentially you have some intent, intent data and you'd really like to go after individuals, but your, your platform or capabilities only allow you to target the company or the domain, or maybe the role type, uh, w which is sort of a step better, but sort of imperfect. Uh, and, and so what's really exciting about the platform is in a scaled way, uh, you can target not only the accounts, but also the individuals. And so that's through either integrations with your existing platform. So you can integrate with an email platform so you can do that direct one-to-one -one, uh, outreach on the marketing side. Uh, on the sales side, you can integrate. We have our own platform called Engage. So it, it directly integrates and you can leverage that or you can leverage other ones if you have those as well. And then from a media perspective, again, as I was mentioning, uh, because of the fact we have our own DSP, you can, yes, indeed, do individual level targeting. You could also do it at the role level or at the company level. Um, and then you can also do that through, through paid social. And, and where that's uh, so exciting is one, it just allows you to be much more directed and targeted around who you're wanting to go after, but also it's way more efficient. So you're not just wasting money on sort of these broad based campaigns. Uh, and so that means at least uh, you know, for us, when we're using it, uh, we can have a much wider net of companies that we're targeting that are showing high intent versus potentially only being able to do a few because we're having to spend so much more money wastefully on fewer accounts. Wonderful. Okay, let's 
see what else do we have in here. Um, okay, this one, I'm, um, well, both of you can answer, but I think Amanda, you can, you can answer it for sure, is how can you effectively email nurture new contacts from Zoom Info out without explicit consent? And Brian, you can answer this if you prefer. I thought that it was gonna go a little bit more in depth on intent, but Amanda, feel free if you'd like to provide some there, clarity. Sorry, Brian, why don't you take that question? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, a couple of different things. So there's um, what, something, maybe even a, a good uh, framing uh, comment. Uh, something that's been really exciting for me as I've joined uh, Zoom Info and I've been very involved in this space is Zoom Info puts privacy really at the forefront of everything that we do. And so we are always compliant with GDPR, CCPA, things of, things of that nature. And so um, when you're thinking about direct outreach, there are different rules that govern sort of scaled outreach through potentially a marketing platform or one-to-one -one outreach, either directly from sales or from a sales uh, engagement platform. And so from a sales engagement platform perspective, when you're doing that sort of one-to-one -one outreach, even if it's administered in a scaled way, you can do that uh, direct uh, uh, conversation uh, without explicit approval. There are different rules on the marketing side that you would obviously have to work with it. Okay. Um, Amanda, I'm going to ask you this question, but Brian, also feel free to answer. Uh, what can I do to help secure an additional budget so that I can get both intent sources? Any thoughts there? Any advice from a CMO? Uh, so uh, I, I, one of the things that, just going back to my, my previous comment, it, if you were to normally for marketing, many times our media budget is one of our largest line items. Uh, and, and certainly what you can probably find through your broader activities is you are doing some combination of reaching out to a whole bunch of people in the hope that something lands, or you are reaching out to a whole bunch of people at a very targeted list of accounts, hoping that something lands. And if you can then say, this is how much money I can save by doing a much more targeted set of outreach, being way more efficient, something that we notice within our own ads because we're targeting the right people, our click-through rates are way higher uh, you can free up that budget and actually put it towards those relevant intent signals uh, coming from Zoom Info and coming from G2 uh, and actually not only uh, potentially save money that you're spending from a media perspective, but significantly increase the output that you're getting. And so uh, it, it hopefully, uh, assuming that you're, you're talking to your finance leaders or your marketing leader, should be a fairly easy conversation to have if you can bring that type of information to the table. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I, I, think that's the perfect response. I think the thing I would add is, is where are you getting the money from? And it's oftentimes if you look at your ad dollars or you look at even uh, maybe other sources of prospecting information that your BDRs or SDRs might be utilizing, you can easily say, well, if I think this is going, you know, have your hypothesis, I think this is going to convert uh, X percent better. And I think that we're going to actually be able to close more business. There is usually a very good justification for investing in data alongside those, those budget line items. Um, I think going in with the hypothesis of how it's going to, how it's going to improve your conversion rates, for example, um, and your efficiency is, is always helpful. Awesome. All right. Well, Looks like we've answered all of our questions from the audience. Audience, feel free to submit any within the next minute or so. We definitely have some time here. Um, is there anything that I missed that you want to make sure our speakers, one last takeaway, one last advice around intent data and you know why they should be looking at Zoom Info and G2 for it? And Amanda, I'll kick, thing, kick that off with you first. I think it's it's never been a better time to get started if you're not trying to utilize different data sources I, and really be very efficient in the way you're thinking about your marketing and sales efforts now is is a great time to do that. So, and if you are investing in that, I think anyone who is actually perfecting these plays and really leaning into data as core to really their go-to-market strategy, uh, certainly with buyer intent data, I think is going to have a leg up. And I think that the piece I'll just add, and I was spent the last two days in different cities talking to a bunch of CMOs, and this, the, these topics came um, came up. That I think many of us are trying to figure out where within the scale of just very broad based outreach versus very very targeted ABM, and knowing that neither one of those really are working the way that we would expect. That you need to figure out some happy medium, and really I think the the key to that happy medium is intent data. Uh, and so not just having that data, but effectively leveraging it to drive targeted actions in a 
uh, specific targeted way at companies and also individuals. And so uh, I, I, we were actually talking about it sort of in some ways, this idea of automated scale plays based on very targeted information is the next iteration of account-based marketing. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot to that, uh, but you obviously have to have the right data at, at its core to enable you to, to do just that. And uh, again, uh, the information that's coming from G2, incredibly powerful and useful, and the ability to execute on that information from ZoomInfo uh, just adds a lot of power to your arsenal. Awesome. All right, um, there was some questions that came through, so let's just answer a few of them really quickly before we close out. Um, I think one of them here was um, using intent um, with, or examples of using intent with smaller teams. Amanda, I don't know if you have any experience with that on a smaller team being able to utilize intent. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Um, we actually see a lot of success in our startup segment. So this is companies who are under 50 employees leveraging intent data. Um, oftentimes what they're doing is using it for really targeted outbound outreach. Um, it's still highly effective with something like LinkedIn. I think that really being knowing that smaller companies are going to have less budget it's a great example of really being efficient in the plays that you're running. And LinkedIn certainly is, is a great platform for that. From a sales perspective, it could be as simple as making sure that every day your, your sales team is really looking at those intent signals first when they're prioritizing their outreach and getting really scrappy and saying, here's what I'm gonna actually, I know this about these companies. I know these are the right prospects and really refining the plays. I don't think you have to be super sophisticated. You don't have to have all the bells and whistles in your tech stack. You don't have to have a ton of uh, ad dollars to utilize intent data really successfully. And we see a lot of smaller companies who, uh, especially on G2, kind of punch above their weight in a category by getting savvy about how they're using uh, the buying behavior on G2 to inform their outbound. Yeah, and I would just add, I, I think the, particularly when you have smaller teams, the more you're leveraging scalable plays, the easier you can have broader impact. And so I think it's, it's a really important piece. Uh, th there was another question I, um, that I can see in here about uh, examples of companies using intent data versus those that are not in some of the, the impacts they have. And I was just going to give an example. Brand Live is a, uh, a customer uh, of ours, and, and, and they, in leveraging our intent data, were able to exceed the revenue targets by over 900%. They got uh, an additional 18,000 leads in six months, as well as over a million dollars in pipeline in that, that period, specifically from leveraging that intent data to drive outbound activities. Uh, and, and so it is very, very tangible, the, the growth uh, and additional success that you can get by leveraging this intent data and then deploying it in your go-to-market motion. Wonderful. All righty. Well, I think we can end it at there unless there was any other questions, Amanda, that you saw. Um, I think we answered them all, but anything else that you want to mention? Well, I see a question here from Linda about mining how content is viewed rather than what people do. And I think the, the one thing that I would just add and maybe explain about G2 is that it really is, it's an active experience. No one's on G2 passively uh, exploring software. It's, it's really their they're researching, they're actually searching for specific types of software. They're doing competitive comparisons, which for us is an active process. They're actually saying, I'm gonna look at software one, two, and three and compare them. Um, there, there is very little, there's not a lean back experience on G2. These are very uh, in, much in market buyers and um, the actions they're taking on G2 directly inform the data. So I just wanted to clarify that because I think it's a really good question. And um, there is intent data that is very much about content viewership and it's more of a, it's sort of what people might say as higher funnel intent data and there's a value to that too. Um, but, but the intent data that's coming from G2 is very much a behavior based signal. Um, that someone is doing something very proactively on the site. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that. That's awesome. Yeah. And I was gonna say, just to add to that, you also can get sort of more of that do behavior within the Zoom Info platform uh, as well. So obviously if you're on your own website, you can look at specific actions, which you can tar um, tag in different ways. Uh, but also, as I mentioned, sort of that scoops idea where we're doing research on companies and it's very tangible activities, such as they've opened up an RFP or a leader has moved in and potentially you can see it's someone who's come from a previous company that leveraged uh, sort of your, your products. Uh, so those are those are very specific things that we've found to be very helpful in actually driving intent-related signals into buying behaviors. 
And that's a great point, because then if you can layer that in with the very action-oriented signals from G2, I mean, it's a great way to really uh, understand specifically who are the highest propensity customers that you should be talking to right now, both companies and then certainly the contact that contacts that you're going to get within Zoom Info. So it's it's a great question because I do think it's a common common uh, understanding of intent data because some sources of intent data are more passive and, and maybe content related as well. So. Awesome, wonderful. Alrighty, well. We will wrap up there, everyone. Thank you, audience members, for being here and joining us and listening to the wonderful guests that we have today that gave us wonderful content. So thank you all for being here. And thank you, Amanda and Brian, for joining us and delivering this content. I know that it was a lot to go through, but I really appreciate all of the information. Uh, audience members, just letting you know, as a reminder, you will you will receive the recording within 24 to 48 hours after we conclude um, and I hit end right now. So uh, definitely keep an eye on your inbox. Uh, you'll be able to access the audience console that you're in right now. So you can use that link to share with any internal team members, uh, external team members, as well as um, utilize the content that's in the resource center there and be able to download it. So don't feel like you're missing out if you weren't able to download that yet. Um, but thank you all again for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye, everyone.